Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It is a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord on this morning. We bring you greetings from the Christ.
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. May it be a blessing to the reading of the word. shall not escape. But ye, brethren, that are in the darkness, that they should not walk, overtake thee as a thief. Ye are the children of light, and the children of day. We are all not of night, nor of day. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that have sleep in the night, and they that be drunk, are drunk in the day. Let, but, but, but let us walk who, who are in the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and the heaven and the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to attain salvation by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Great help God, we just thank you, Lord, for the Almighty God, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, God, starting the day that we have seen God. God, we just thank you right now, God, my Father, God. God, we ask you, Lord, forgive us for all our sins, God. God, everything that we may have said, everything that we may have did, God. But God, this is the day that the Lord has made, God. And God, we shall rejoice in it, God, my Father, God. God, we lift up the praise team, God, Lord, today, God. God, we lift up the musicians, God, Lord. God, we ask you, Lord, have your way in this earth today, God. God, we need you, God, my Father, God. God, we lift up the man of this house, God. God, we thank you for a word that life, God, my Father, God. God, we lift up the first lady, God, my Father, God. God, we just think of every deacon, God, my Father, every minister in this house, God. God, we just speak blessings over their life, God, Lord. God, we need you, God, and Lord, Lord, God. God, today in the Lord, my Father, God. God, we need a movement, God, my Father, God. God, we need a touch, God, my today, God. God, we need a God. We just thank you right now, God. God, have your way, God, my Father, God. God, 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 we want to glorify your name, God, God. God, we want your name to be glorified, God, my Father, God. That anything in us, God, is not like Christ, God. God, we ask the Lord to remove it, God, my Father, God. God, we thank the Lord for the job and the opportunity, God. And God, we ask the Lord to protect us, God, my Father, God. Do your blood right now, God. God, let the blood protect us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
far. Pastor Dave is going to join you a little dairy in the praise and worship. Amen. Pastor Howard, my daughter, Evangelist Johnson, the Lord, for prayer and scriptures. Thank God for just being here one more time. Oh, yes. We honor him for, for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures through all generations. His truth will be there. And he tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're so grateful. Continue to pray for. For all the 
promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who has also sealed us and given the earning of the spirit in our hearts God bless your word we thank you for the fact that you are still on the throne we thank you for knowing that all the glory all the praise belongs to you bless us one more time Lord thank you Lord I thank you for what you're doing right now thank you Jesus thank you for your anointing thank you for your revelation oh God have your way Jesus have your way Jesus Lord I thank you for the Holy Ghost thank you for the baptism in your bachelor's name Jesus thank you for oh God for an opportunity to repent and have your way have your way bless these your people in Jesus name Amen it is amazing in this particular text how the Apostle Paul writing here and he's writing from a mindset of him really want to somewhat stand for his integrity in the word I would say because they were they were already questioning why he changed his plan because in this text you will know it is a change of plan and so Corinthians were questioning his integrity. Now you say he was going to do this and you say he was going to do that. And so when he changed plans, they were somewhat questioning his integrity. It is amazing. You can be in the midst of situation that things changes. Things change. It is not so much that you deceive someone, but sometimes things change. The way you intended to do it, you may have to end up doing it in a different way because things change. And so this was really the thing here with Paul because he was he wanted to visit them a second time because when you look in the first writing, the first writing, there have been different theologians or even somewhat suggest that there could have been more writings of, of, that was written to the Corinthians. But these were the two that was recorded. And so now as Paul, when we understand in the first writing, he, he deals with a lot of uh, problems and solutions and he deals with moral issues as pertain to families and as pertain to uh, them being young converts in the Lord and he has to instruct them and encourage them. So he deals with a lot of issues, you know, especially from the family perspective and establishing a foundation. But it is amazing now when he gets here in this second uh, writing. He's, he's writing now. 
Let me, let me just, and I want you to think about this subject. I, I want you to, something from, especially from that 21st verse, something to rejoice about. Amen. Tell your family member and tell your co-worker, whoever you may be, in spite of everything that we are facing and we're confronted with, you still got something to rejoice about. Because God is still good. Amen. And his mercy is everlasting. And as I've stated, his truth endures for all generations. So God, God has not failed you. God has not left you. God is still God. Thank you, Jesus. And so now when we understand Paul's writing, we just these, these particular writing in the second epistle, we're dealing with him, him encouraging the brothers and sisters for them to stay faithful, stay faithful to the Lord. It is amazing because out of everything that when you choose to serve God and when you choose to walk before the Lord and to enter into covenant relationship with him, you are going to be confronted with all type storms, all type situations, and trials and tribulations. And so this really is the case here. Now he's he, 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 he's writing here in the second epistle encouraging them that they have stood faithful through the tests and the trials. And this is really I want to just encourage somebody that even that are even watching and listening that it is a blessing. And I and I'm continuing to pray for you that you have continued to be steadfast and unmovable and continue to be faithful and to give, continue to worship God, not only in spirit and in truth, but you have continued to be obedient to the word. And so now as he writes, as he writes to encourage those that are standing firm and those that have not that not have fallen by the wayside. And he's encouraging them to just hold on and to stand fast and to continue to give God praise and to worship him in the beauty of holiness. What a mighty God we serve. And so now he's and he's also my God, he's, he's, he's challenging those false prophets, those false ones that are coming up against him, against his apostolic authority and his apostleship and trying to undermine what God has not only called him to do, but has ordained for him to do. It is amazing, my brothers and sisters. Here he is in the midst of encouraging those and somewhat fighting against those that are trying to undermine his authority, his authority, I would say. Paul here now is defending his credentials that I am who God says I am. Good. You got to tell that to yourself. I mean, even when you are when you are faced with great opposition and when the enemy is trying to discourage you, you got you got to speak it. You got to speak the word. You got to speak it with. With, with, with some authority, with some enthusiasm that, that God will do. Hallelujah. All right now. God will turn this thing around and he's turning it around. God is getting us ready to get into a curve and, and we're 
ready to get into a curve so we can get ready to turn the curve. Hallelujah. I thank God for, for what he's doing, saints. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter of him getting ready to bring us into the curve so we can go around the curve. Good God. We in the midst of head toward the curve, but we got to keep trusting him because the victory is on the other side of the curve. But you got to get around the curve. Mm -hmm. I, and I pray that you will get around the curve now. And I pray that you will you will just hold on and not quit because God is, is getting ready to get, get us all around now. We just got to hold on. I thank him for giving the doctors and scientists the technology and coming up. And I pray for still a continuance, safety of the people. But we've got to keep trusting God. Amen. Proverbs tells us to trust in the Lord with all my heart. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Amen. So, so it is amazing now here. Paul here is, is encouraging the Corinthians. He's encouraging them. He's fighting for his credentials. He's fighting for his status. He's fighting for his position because they are trying to discredit him. It's not so much about him. They are trying to discredit him because you got to understand Paul was the same one that fought against him. Amen. He was very strong in Judaism and when Christianity was introduced, my God, Paul fought against it. To hear the Damascus Road experience, God had to change it. Yes. I submit to you today, my brothers and sisters, God can change not only peoples, but He can change the situations. But you gotta let Him do it. You gotta let Him. You gotta believe it. You gotta trust Him. You gotta stand firm on His promises. And when you try to do then you get in the way of God wanting to do what he's trying to do. And so it is amazing, my brothers and sisters, that here Paul, we see here just in this text, we see the not only it deals with the person, and it deals with the, the preacher, and it deals with the preaching, and also just in this text that I read, it deals with the positive message of the word. And so now you got the you got the person, you got the preacher, and you got the preaching, and you got the positive message of the word. It is a blessing, my brothers and sisters, for the fact, for the just for the simple fact that God is faithful. God is still faithful. My God. It is encouraging to know that saints. Hallelujah. And so now when we begin to look here, man, I want to just look here at this, this 21st verse, he says. And we, tell, we see that the yeas and the nays, and but with God, all things in God are yeah, yes, hallelujah, my God, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Because it, and when, when, when you think about this text, you just this particular text, what was what was produced in the apostles and those the disciples and those that was following God was, was fulfilled in the actions of other people. I want you to just think about what I just said. What was produced and introduced produced and introduced in Paul and the apostles and Savannah's and Timothy's of all those the disciples, but it was fulfilled in the actions of all the other disciples and those that were falling. Now, I said that to say this because what God is doing in you Enjoyed by somebody else. Somebody else can praise him for you holding on. That's what I'm trying to tell you. For you not quitting. 
But you not giving up. Somebody else is going to be blessed by you not throwing in the towel. Not for you not saying, I can't, I can't make it. I can't go no further. I don't believe God is going to do it. And so for you, what has been produced in Paul, now what he's saying here, is that it's going to be fulfilled in the actions of other people. Yes. Because if I had not held on, if I had not hold, and if I had quit, Jesus. somebody else would have quit. Some of my family would have got discouraged. Yes. Some of your, your friends would have said, I can't do it. Some of your co-workers, Jesus. even your children would have said, if, if, if you quit, I know that there's no hope. And so Paul is saying that what has, what has taken place in me will be fulfilled in the life of somebody else. Some of the things that you and I would like to see take place. It may not even be take, it may not take place in us individually, but you may get the opportunity to see it in one of your kids or one of your grandchildren. God is an awesome God. Thank you, Lord. Or possibly a great great grandchild. And so now here he is saying that for all the promises of God in him are yet yes and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Listen at what he says in the 21st verse. He said now he will establish establish this word establish it comes from the the Greek word of babaya. It is a legal, it is a legal word. And it is used to, to represent the relationship of one from the perspective of indisputable and indestructible. And so now this, when they, when the Greeks looked at this, they were looking at it from a legal perspective that, that this legal term here, it represents the relationship of one from the perspective of, of indisputable and indestructible. Now he will establish us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Because when you look at this particular scripture, you have to look at it through the eyes of the realizing and the realization Of that God is going to give you something to rejoice about. Thank you, Lord. Because now in the spiritable, if it can be disputed, it can be honored, yes. Or if it if it's indestructible, it can be if something can be destroyed destructible it can be destroyed but indisputable there's no argument of debating or it can't be destroyed because if God did it that should be enough and give you enough incentive to know that if God did it and if God brought you through and if God brought you over if God brought you out, and some of us he had to take us under. Yeah. That should be enough within you to be able 
to rejoice and to be able to say if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side when the enemy came in to eat up my flesh they stumbled and failed to an ocean encamped about me against me in this will I be confident one thing have I desired of the Lord that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and to behold the beauty of the Lord in his temple. And so now I just want to encourage you today and that now he which has established you, he has given you some indisputable hope. He has given you some indestructible hope. It is God that has brought us and God has kept us. And this is why you ought to rejoice, my brothers and sisters. And you ought to be able to lift him up, my God, and to sound your voice, my God, and open up your heart and give God praise and open your mouth with a praise. Because we still got something to rejoice about. I've got something to rejoice about because God has allowed me to see another day. Somebody shout glory. Well, yes, what a mighty God we serve. God is still on the throne, my brothers and sisters. I've got something to rejoice about because I can feel it down in my soul that God is He's making a way. Somebody shout glory. My God, you ought to be able to see it and see the cloud by the size of a man's hand. And you ought to know that God is getting ready to rain. And God is getting ready to turn some stuff around. Somebody tell him thank you. Oh, yes, he is. I've got something to rejoice about. I've got something to rejoice about because I've still got a maid of mine. I still can lift up the name of the Lord. Somebody come on and give God some praise. Even in spite of all that we've been to and in spite of all that we have confronted, all the hurdles and all the obstacles, all the storms and all But if 
and believeth in me shall never die. So we, what God has done, brought eternity into time. Allow us time to get back into eternity. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So even when we cease to live in time, we can get back up in eternity. Thank you, Lord. Because it's amazing. We came from eternal eternity into time because it's deeper than your father DNA. Fertilization, all that had to take place. But you had to come from because God took some doubt. Blow the breath of life into it, and it became a living soul. So, from eternity into time, and what we do in time is a reflection of where we will spend. Got so much to rejoice because we are seeing numbers. Death like we never seen it before. Jesus delayed to come to Mary and Martha. If you had come, I would rather Lazarus would not have died. But even now we know so. Whatever you ask of the Lord, he will do it. Jesus said, your brother now is going to rise again. We know he's going to get up in the resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall be he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. We are living to be able to live again. We've got something to rejoice about. We've got something to give God praise about. Yes, I. I know it may look tough right now, but I still got something to rejoice about. Yeah. God has given some of your business. In the midst of a pandemic, God is increasing some of you all's business. I'm continuing to pray for it. You still got something to rejoice about. You're not saved? Get saved. You're still, God is still filling people with the Holy Ghost. Still allow people to repent. The water is still ready for baptism. I've got something to rejoice. Now he which has established, when he which has established you is, is, is indisputable because God did. It's indestructible because God did it. No matter what folks say, no matter what the enemy may try to do, 
no matter how you may try to tear it down, you got to stand firm on the fact that God did it. God made a way. God is keeping you. And we are being, though my outward man may perish, but inwardly I'm being renewed day by day. Somebody give him praise wherever you are. So I'm praying for you. Praying for your families. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Go back and read that 21st verse. Now he which established us and anointed, we know it's God. It's in the spirit. I know the enemy may try to discourage some of you all. Some of you all are dealing with anxiety. Some of you all are dealing with depression and discouragement. Even some of you all are, this is not a situation where he's, he, he, this, this time he's raining on the just, just like he's on the unjust. But you got to stand firm on the promises of God. That God is still the way maker. God has given you something to rejoice about. So I love you. I speak blessings upon you. Stay safe in Jesus' name.